Hey, it's Cosmic Ray, the quantum mechanic. Sorry I'm late. For today's lesson, all we need are a couple balloons and Velcro. We're going to teach you atmospheric pollution chemistry. We're going to learn the molecules by making balloons. The Velcro are going to be the bonds. This is the coolest lesson. We stick to our color coding. Green is always oxygen. Oxygen will be known. Red. Hydrogen. So let's start with the two simplest ones. Hydrogen, oxygen. What is the air that we breathe? O2. What O2 is, is a double bonded oxygen. Got two lone pairs of electrons. Let's make a couple little aliens out here. Huh? Don't they look like aliens? And we need another two. The whole key, if you know my technique to learning chemistry, is counting the electrons. But today we're going to do something different. Each of these bonds is two electrons too. So we used to make these barbells was the best way to do it. It's fun. Sometimes you can even do them with crosses and you can play around with it. Some people make dots, one dot, one X easy way to do it. So, oxygen being O2. <coughs> oxygen has atomic number of eight. That means there's eight protons, eight neutrons in the middle. The nucleus, they call it. But for chemistry, we're counting electrons, so we've got to think on the outsides. The valence is the outermost electrons on this. So we need O2, two oxygens. You gotta buy the good balloons. These are coming 12 inch to 14 inch. If you can find a 14 inch balloon, even though they're about 10 cents a piece, buy them. They're rounder and they're bigger. I run into so many people trying to play hit the balloon with the old folks. And if the balloon isn't round, it doesn't fly, it doesn't float, it's not worth it. So usually what I'll do is I'll tie two of these together, like this was. So O2, with the double bond, is a strong bond. So usually what you see is, you know, the O2 is going to, when it's a gas, there's a lot of energy. So really how this O2 looks in the atmosphere, 21.3% of the air you're breathing in is O2, double bonded. Okay, this is a strong bond here. But what we're doing for this case, what you do with the Velcro now is there's a sticky side and a furry side. So we are going to stick, how well should we do this best? Because we want the hydrogens up there, but they got to match. If they don't match, they're not going to stick very good. So we're going to put them kind of close. You see where that one is? So that's the grabbers, and this is going to be the opposite kind. So the kids can learn like this is up and down spins maybe, because the quantum chemists love getting into that. So this would be two of the bonding electrons. And what we're going to do on this one is the same thing, right? So we're going to put one grabby one, one softy one. Now when we got these two up there, how is O2 going to bond? Double bond, doubles, line them up. This is the quantum, uh, what do they call it, molecular theory that they love to do. Now look at that. This is cool. This is the double bond. This is just how it would look to a chemist. So you see the practicality of that? If you can look real close, there's electrons. A pi bond would be coming and going if I line this up perfect, but i got to be careful because these are so good or sticky that they'll rip the balloon because I blew these really high. So what do we do now? We bond an O2 with H2. Now H2, hydrogen, is just a proton and an electron with a proton and an electron. So we always draw electrons green and what we see is that there's actually a bond in between these two protons. That's called H2. I'll write it in red. Keep it true to color here. Is that showing up good on screen? This is H2. 
So what is H2? I said two little protons, right? Got to make them little. Okay. Tie it off. These are good balloons, so they're easy to tie. They don't break. They stay kind of round. Okay. Now, the molecular orbital theory that all your introductory chemistry texts have, have electrons coming together with up and down spins. The two types of Velcro, those are your spins. So, on the one hydrogen molecule, it's a molecule because it's H2. Okay, single atoms are not molecules. I get more people, just for aesthetic looks, we're going to stick that near the nipple. Probably that's the best place to put it. So you would call this black one an electron with an up spin. You call this one an electron with a down spin. Comes together. I don't want to stick it too close. Okay, now normally I tie these and, you know, you could play around making H2 as a sigma bonded sturdy molecule here, but we're going to be breaking bonds. So this is H2, comes up to O2. Now what actually happens, see they just show you the balanced equation. What happens is, pop, you've got a single oxygen now. This is a radical, okay? It's going to find one hydrogen like right away, okay? So now you've got an OH radical. See that unpaired electron there? This thing is super high energy. This thing will rip apart. This is what's in water. Remember before when we were talking about the atmospheric molecules? Water has a hydroxyl OH minus, well, it's a radical. It's not even the minus anyway. So it's OH with an unpaired electron. This is high energy, people. This is what you need your... Um, Vitamin C, your antioxidants, they call it. So the more water you drink, the more hydroxyl radicals there are. But we're talking combustion here. These are the reactions that happen in your body, for example. So now what do we get? We've got H2O. Now what's the beauty of this? Lone pairs of electrons we haven't drawn in, but this is exactly how chemistry looks to a chemist. Two H's on this side of space, and what's the beauty of this? Red, positive, green, negative. So look, we got a lot of green. To really do this right, next one that we make here, we're going to make it proper. We're going to have these up here because you can picture the balloon as electron density. You see these three-dimensional drawings in the introductory textbooks? Make them out of balloons. I mean, this is cool. Am I an idiot for getting so fanatical about this? Kids should be doing this in kindergarten, okay? Science centers, you're not doing your jobs, man. Kids will play with this. Now, I got the helium tank over there, and ideally what you would do is you could tie these off to make the real molecule when I got lots of balloons, but I'm a low budget today. You tie them off, you half fill them with helium so that they still go up, the string will hold it, but if they let go, it floats away. It doesn't fly off and they lose it. How many times a kid go crying watching their balloon fly away? You half fill it, a little more than half. One, you're conserving the helium, right? Your helium will go almost twice as far. Two, it floats, because that's what these molecules are doing in the atmosphere, the air that we're breathing. So, every kid in the world, when you make this and hold it, okay, what does water do? When it's hot, you heat it, it's a liquid, it's vibrating. Look at that. There goes the proton. Electron stayed. Actually, this is OH minus. I'm going to get in trouble later. That wasn't the radical that I did before. I guess we can't do pH theory with this because that electron would stay with the water. Okay, see how when you know a little bit, you can correct yourself? That electron would have to stay to be the radical. That's what I was wondering. I was looking at it. I'm like, wait a minute. We'll edit that part out. Okay, but this is still great to show H2O. Okay, so one of the problems with the atmosphere is that water vapor is one of the main pollutants. Now, what I want to show you was our circle. Actually, this one 